Hello and welcome to the latest of my deep dive videos. This one into the Taurus solar eclipse of the 30th of April in terms of universal central time. Now this is also a black moon. Now what I'm going to do is describe to you what uh, the Taurus solar eclipse essentially holds, the length of its influence and what a black moon means. I'm then going to go on to share with you where the event occurs in your particular locality around the world. I then will share with you the event chart in terms of technical astrology based on Universal Central Time, which does give us an ascendant in Scorpio. But please stay with me because then I will share with you a simpler wheel where I've moved all the planets around in terms of the overall zodiac. And that will help you, particularly if you're emerging your interest in a, a, a astrology or growing it, to see how this pans out. Thinking about the fact that this event occurs in house two of the overall zodiac, which begins, of course, with Aries. Now, the final thing I'm going to share with you is the forecast for each of the 12 zodiac signs. You can watch this in terms of your sun or your ascendant. The choice is yours. Now, if you would like to ascend above uh, zodiac astrology and are excited about the information that more serious astrology can give you to structure and plan your life and optimize your talents, why not give me three pieces of personal information? Your time, date and place of birth and I can give you an incredible roadmap to guide your future life. This can help you to quarry out your true potential. Understand some of the patterns that are more difficult that you've encountered in your life. But also in terms of your future forward hopes, give you a forecast for the next 12 months. If you get this all together in a package, I give you 30% off. Please see the link beneath this video. Finally, if you are new to my channel, I'd be honoured if you would subscribe. I've been doing YouTube for a very long time, but I went through many years of ill health. I'm very close to 100,000 subs. So if you do click or tap on the bell notification symbol, I would be greatly pleased. Now, on the screen now, you can see where this event occurs in your particular locality. And in New York, it's on the 30th. In Los Angeles, also the 30th. But you can see in terms of New Delhi and Sydney, it's the 1st of May. Now, what is the Taurus solar eclipse about? Well, Taurus is the second zodiac sign of the zodiac. The first is Aries. And if you remember, there was an Aries new moon on the 1st of April. And that was the first of the astrological year, which begins with the vernal equinox or the spring equinox. So it doesn't follow the same calendar that we do outside of astrology. Now, in terms of Aries, that's when we initiate, we start things or we inject ongoing plans with greater enthusiasm and drive. Taurus is about consolidating the foundation of that first push. So it is very much about getting the foundations right. It's also about understanding our self-worth. The sign of Taurus is governed by the rather beguiling planet of Venus. Venus is about charm in the sign of Taurus. It's also about the enjoyment of more sensual pleasures, whether it's good food, wine or intimacy. But it also can be an appreciation or the need to be realistic about our resources, especially our everyday resources. Now, of course, we are having a big realignment in terms of the cost of living. A lot of interest rates have gone up, the cost of uh, carbon fuels has increased, and inflation has come in in a big way. So for some people, it's not about making way from a few luxuries. It is about actually trying to sustain themselves within all the pressure of these changes. So this is a very serious time, and it is one that I did flag as early as last August when I did my year aheads for 2022 because the North Node, which is the kind of influence that connects us all, plus Uranus, plus the Eclipse series moving into the signs of Taurus, those everyday finances, and also Scorpio, those longer term and shared uh, costs, 
is a lot about what this year is about. So we've got a big reset going on. So the solar eclipse energy lasts for the next six months, but I think many of us are tackling these changes anyway by perhaps trying to conserve the amount of energy we use, being a bit more frugal in some ways, perhaps cooking food more from scratch. And actually in some ways we can find opportunities from this, but I don't in any way disguise the fact for some people this is a, a brutally difficult situation. But the black moon is because of that energy that emanated in the new moon on the 1st of April. So when we get two new moons in a month, it's, it's called a black moon. But the influence of the solar eclipse is over the next six months. So this is something that's going to keep us busy and we've got to keep working at it. Now I'm now going to share with you the event chart in terms of the technical astrology. So based on Universal Central Time, you can see that the Ascendant is 23 degrees Scorpio and beautifully it's alongside the part of Fortune. The first house is how we instantly feel things. So this time for us all, I feel, does seem quite intense. But on the other side of the heavens, the Descendant is combining with the North Node in Taurus. And that's actually potentially very good because it instinctively shows how we can all relate to one another's situation if we choose to. But the way we relate is often through social media these days. And in a T-square between these two points is Saturn. And Saturn's in the sign of Aquarius, which it's traditionally the ruler of, but it's in the third house. So how we think and how we articulate how we feel to others needs to be done with a degree of care over this next six months because there won't be everybody who's finding life so easy. Now if you look at house three you can also see that Mars is there at 11 degrees 53 minutes in Pisces. Not its favourite location, some astrologers would argue because Mars governs the sign of Scorpio which is water that there is some mutual receptivity in the sign of Pisces. People natally who have uh, Mars in Pisces are often involved in some kind of deep work, even working in fishing or as a deep sea diver, or perhaps working in a psychological environment, perhaps in mental health work. But in this particular configuration, Mars is in the third house, so it can be quite fluid because of the mutability of Pisces. But of course, Saturn's there as well. Saturn stop, Mars is go. But in the third house, which is quite quick thinking, very Gemini-like, we just need to be aware of the uh, paradox between those two influences. But then you can see house four, and we have Neptune, Venus, and Jupiter all together beautifully in the sign of Pisces. And of course, Venus is exalted in Pisces, and Neptune and Jupiter rule the sign, and they came together in an exact conjunction on the 12th of April. Now, uh, one particular quite well-known astrologer was saying in his newspaper column how this was a portend of great luck. I thought this was uh, interesting because obviously we've got the situation in Ukraine, we've got the cost of living crisis, we've got a lot of people who are finding life very difficult. I think the wonderment of Neptune and Jupiter can be that it can increase our spiritual dimension, gives, gives us a, a, a sense of connecting with our higher self. But in this particular event, with uh, Venus so close to Jupiter, there can be a bit of fortune here, I feel, because Venus is the lesser benefit and Jupiter the greater benefit in astrology, so that the two planets are fortune, but they're in the fourth house. So what they're asking us to really savour in terms of that fortune is basically emotional love or emotional, uh, emotional dialogue. So supportiveness, nurture, looking out for those who may be less fortunate. But going back to Mars, if we move into house six in this technical chart, you can see the sun, the moon, uh, Eros, which is the asteroid of deep love, and also Uranus, along with the North Node, are all in the sixth house, but all in Taurus. And the sixth house is very Virgo, and it's about health, fitness, diet, but also refining what we have to make it work in a more efficient manner. So you can see that in terms of universal central time, the ascendant is intense. 
We can relate better to people. We need to choose our words carefully with Saturn, particularly in terms of social media. Compassion to others and giving where we can to those who are less fortunate, even if it means leaving our change in a, in a shop, if it's a few cents or pennies, it all builds up. Or, you know, if we can help somebody who, uh, through a food hub, who's less fortunate, or perhaps send off donations to those parts of the world that are having it much more difficult than us, then those are good things that we can do. And in fact, if you look at that ascendant in Scorpio, the part of fortune, and where Neptune, Venus and Jupiter are, they receive that energy from Scorpio and the part of fortune beautifully. So there's a lot of love to be shared if we can attune to the new reality around resources, which is what this solar eclipse in Taurus is asking us to do, try to savour the things in life that perhaps are less to do with straightforward consumption, and more to do with simplifying our lives and enjoying being with the people that really matter, or making our lives work in a more practical and grounded way. Also, you can see that Mercury is just into the sign of Gemini, and of course it rules that sign, so it's in its dignity, and it forges a disassociate trine with Pluto in the second house. So, collaboration, the seventh house, around resources, Pluto the seventh, can see some transformations. So, you know, the cost of living is, it, crisis is very, very real, but I think this event really asks us, especially with the energy of Uranus, to try to find new and fresh ways to liberate ourselves from, th from feeling that we have to have stuff. You know, sometimes the clothes we buy these days are so badly made, you know, within a few wears or a few washes, they're absolutely no good at all. That fast fashion has an enormously bad impact on the environment. So you could say that Taurus energy is the environment, it's the soil. So if we can buy less uh, clothes or uh, buy second-hand clothes even and enjoy that, see it as an opportunity or we upcycle things, it all becomes something that we can use as a way to reset our thinking about resources in general. Now on the screen now you can see the wheel which shows the zodiac as a whole. Now in terms of house one that's Aries. So we just have Chiron in house one and Chiron is very much about our self-worth in the sign of Aries and if there are wounds around our self-worth we can certainly work with the help of Chiron and these energies in Taurus. If we only have to base our sense of well-being on how much money we have or the size of the car we have or the amount of foreign holidays we have, those things could be masking a deeper lacking in our own sense of self. So this energy, this collective in house two that's boosted by the radiance of this amazing solar eclipse is a terrific opportunity along, of course, with the uh, wonderful energizing vibe of Mars in the sign of Pisces, which is saying, Make the most of old skills, make the most of old products, make the most of old connections to feed into our sense of self-worth. So a lot of us can be diving deep uh, with that energy of, uh, of Mars, but also Venus, Jupiter and Neptune all in the sign of Pisces, which are in house 12. Of course, Saturn, in terms of the overall chart, is in house 11, humanity. Oh my word, have we learned some lessons about how awful humans can be to one another. And um, so Saturn, of course, in that technical chart, is in a square to that position of the ascendant and also the part of fortune. But in this simple chart, it's still in a square with the North Node. So there's going to be some people that still feel that they have a right to an opinion uh, that may be very challenging to some of us. Um, and there may be other people, you know, this happened, this played out through Brexit, through COVID, people have very polarized opinions. But the sign of Aquarius is about how things affect us all. So we should try to remember that. But in terms of Mercury, 
that's in its home zone of Gemini. As I said before, it sits in the third house. It's a very quick move in, so our ideas can be fluid, but it's lovely angle to Pluto in house 10, which is old power, old, uh, the old structures, the old industries, but the old authoritarian uh, powers as well. That could be transformed by greater, clearer communication. I'm not sure if you're aware of Alexei Navalny, He's uh, uh, locked up on trumped up charges in a Russian prison. Um, he was poisoned with uh, some Novichok uh, not that long ago. Went to Germany, they saved his life. He sh had the courage to go back to Russia and he's been locked up. But he's saying that we need to bombard uh, the world with the truth of what's going on in the world to counter a lot of the propaganda and lies which seem to be out there in a big way. So that's a very interesting way that this Plutonian energy with Mercury could work out to a very beneficial advantage. But of course, in terms of this overall chart, it means that the part of fortune is in house A. That's the deep finance, you know, the sort of banking structures. Um, and possibly we are going to see some kind of realignment in terms of banks, you know, I don't think the the uh, the bull markets that have dominated in terms of, of equities that have gone on for so long, I don't necessarily think that they are sustainable because obviously the way the world is changing to deal with COVID, to deal also with what's gone on in Ukraine and Russia, and the way resources are not being freely exchanged in the way they were before, is going to have a massive impact on us all. So I think this is a time to be a bit more cautious if you are someone who's a saver or you have shares or a pension. I think it's time to be a little bit more old fashioned and be a bit more thrifty. And I would say that's the lesson of this uh, event really. It's about being more compassionate, more connected about what's really important, which is love, kindness, caring and trying to appreciate the good things in life that often the most simple things like a nice piece of homemade cake and a lovely cup of tea with the people we love and perhaps a, a great walk or a cycle ride can be as uplifting as being somewhere glitzy and having to have the latest fad or the latest tech or the latest glitzy furniture or design wear because all these things are having a big impact on our overall resources. Now I'm sure some of you may find my message slightly political um, but I've actually had these beliefs for about 45-50 years. I do think we should live in a more simple way. It's not because I'm jumping on any bandwagon. It's something I've passionately believed in for a very long time. I'm also quite uh, cautious. Uh, 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 if I was in a government sort of situation, my answer to everything wouldn't necessarily be spending, but I would be saying to people, look, have we got so used to living in homes that are actually have the thermostat at way too high when actually we could put another layer of clothes on um, and that would save so much money and also it would make energy cheaper for those people who really are struggling to pay for it. So that's what I'm thinking about. It's more like a sort of global awareness of how consumption affects us all. Now, please stay with me for my forecast for each of the 12 zodiac signs. Now, Aries, for you, this is an opportunity to reset in terms of how much money you're spending on an everyday basis, but also to think about the quality, skills, contacts, knowledge that you've accumulated over a very long period of time. But for you personally, I think somebody from your past could be coming up into your thinking or even come into your world quite powerfully over the next six months. Now, this could be that you're just going to see them on social media. They may get in touch personally. You may even meet up. But I wouldn't be encouraging you to think that every old flame, especially if it was a relationship that ended a bit unresolved, is necessarily repairable. I'm just saying that that set of energies of Venus, Neptune and Jupiter all together do point towards either some reflection and nostalgia or some reconnection or it could be if a relationship you're in at the moment isn't working very well it could be an ending and one of the issues that could push you apart from your partner and see you sitting at either ends of the settee could be differences not just in money but in differences of core values. 
Now Taurus, for you, this is a fantastic event because it's really given you so much encouragement to embrace what makes you different. Uranus has been prompting those people who were born in the first 10 or 12 degrees of the sign of Taurus, has been giving you a lot of extra uh, uh, prompting over the last few years to make changes, to find your personal truth. Uranus is the planet of truth. Of course, your sign has a real appreciation of stability and continuity. But that collection of energy in the sign of Pisces is about your connections to others. And also with Uranus influence, Uranus influence in this event along with Mars, I think your drive to actualize what makes you really fresh, different and singular is really given a huge platform to flourish over this next half year. Go for it. Now Gemini, for you, of course, the event sees the collection of energy in the 12th house. And for some Gemini people, Uranus being there has been really tricky around sleep, nervous tension, feeling a bit on edge. But the collection of energy in your 10th house suggests that your profile is going to rise. It just may be that some of your tactics in order to achieve greater acclaim or recognition may not necessarily need to be quite so front on and obvious subtle reaching out to people, uh, taking soundings, listening to what people are saying, doing deep research can be just as powerful as, you know, in some way trying to achieve much greater prominence in the kind of uh, groundbreaking ways that people have tried many times in the past. You know, doing something that's really quirky or different or being fortunate enough to, to feature on a TV program or a radio channel, or to get a feature in a magazine or a newspaper. These gigs are harder and harder to get these days. But I think that your instincts are going to be very important to your progress over the next half year. But expect to be in more demand and success could be just about to develop for you in really quite a lovely way. In terms of your romantic situation, uh, a real relationship that's evolving could become something more, something more substantive in your life. It's also possible that you could meet someone through your work and don't necessarily expect that person to be exactly the same age as you. Now, Cancer, the collection of energy in Taurus is your 11th house of highest hopes. But that uh, stellium in Pisces is all about your desire to widen your horizons. The connection's clear. You could be traveling with groups or with like-minded people over the next six months, and it could be physical journeying. But the journeying could be in your mind, or it could be that you're going to relocate, but it's going to be very exciting. You just need to make sure that the financial side of things is going to stack up for you. Um, and I think that Saturn has been keeping you quite... Uh, quite honest, as they say, in that regard over the last year and a half, two years. So caution with resources is important, but a tremendous opportunity to really uh, forge connections that really are just absolutely wonderfully good for you. Which brings us to Leo. Now, Leo, for you, the Sun, the Moon, uh, Uranus, and also, of course, uh, Eros, they're all in your 10th house of success. And that collection of energy in the sign of Pisces is in the eighth house of the long-term loot. So if you play your astral cards right, your celestial prospects are really very, very lovely. But I think it may require you to make a change in terms of the type of work you've done or how you work. Maybe you're going to need to delve deep into your own resources to make the most of the opportunities out there. So for some Leos, this could be entrepreneurship, trying a new business, but it could really delight you by how, how it takes off. Now, of course, for you, Virgo, Uranus has been a wonderful prompter in recent years to travel, to be more adventurous, to be more physically active, and to inform yourself, to be more curious. It's really been a very active ingredient in that regard. But the ninth house 
can be an intolerance to the status quo, but not necessarily in a negative way. Change definitely can be as good as a rest. But the collection of energy in your seventh house, in Pisces, is about relationships. If you're single, somebody in the next six months could enter your orbit who is absolutely just fantastically good for you. Whether this will be a lifelong relationship, I definitely wouldn't say. But what I would say is that you can meet alliances that can be mutually helpful. And one of the things that's gonna drive you with this, you're gonna to want to connect with people who are charming, but also good for you energetically. They don't drain you. They actually enthuse you and give you more knowledge to, to interact with them. So it could be complementary activities with others. You don't necessarily all have to bring the same game plan for it to be very effective. But if you are wanting to bring some romance into your life, if you're single, I think you need to be very open-minded about who you can connect with. If you're in a relationship which is a bit stuck and your partner is resistant to your desire to be a, a bit more sparky and spontaneous, I think you are going to need to use quite a lot of diplomacy in order for this to change in the, in the direction you want. You might not get it exactly to where you want it, but I think working with rather than really demanding will be more positive. Now, in terms of Libra, of course, the new moon occurs in your eighth house of longer term resources. So this can be about business. It can be about investments, pensions, shares. It can, of course, be about evolutions. It can be about what makes way in our life to be replaced by something new. So kind of Phoenix energy. And because Uranus is there, um, be very, very open about how you can make the most of any assets you've got. But the collection of energy in the sign of Pisces is instructive because it includes your ruler, but it's the sixth house. Neptune has been a good guy and a bad guy for you, really, since 2012. Made you more self-sacrificing, but at times you've given so much, there's been nothing left. But I think I, I see some kind of progression around your resources um, your work could be an area you do well around and maybe there's going to be more recognition of how much you have worked hard to help others and I really hope that is the case for you. You deserve it. Which brings us to Scorpio. Now of course the new moon, the solar eclipse occurs in your seventh house of relating but Uranus has been there for the last few years. If things have been choppy this gives you an opportunity to improve things, but it's the collection of energy in the fifth house, uh, and of course, including your ruler Mars, which is really, really exciting. You're going to feel much more attractive. Saturn has really been hitting your sense of self-worth, and perhaps even your security zone, you know, where you live, who you live there. Maybe a close relationship has really got a bit icy cold over the last couple of years. There is a chance now for a thaw, but you need to work hard at your listening skills and attune into what people want from you. It's not just about send communication and receive. It's also about understanding what people want for us before we exchange those messages. But I think the warmth of Venus, Jupiter and Neptune can bring you some good fortune because the fifth house is the sector of chance, of luck and risk. I'm not saying that you should bet all your savings on any kind of gamble, but I'm saying that more cautious side of your nature, don't let it pulverize your passion. That brings us to the Sagittarius. Well, for you, the new moon, the solar eclipse is in the sixth house. If through COVID, through the winter months in the Northern Hemisphere, you feel you've got a bit, you know, things have slowed down a bit, you're not feeling quite as fit and well and energized or organized as you've been, you're going to want to put that right in the next six months. You may even want to run a business from home. You may have a new addition come into your family. You may also move home or modify the home you live in. And if you do, you're going to decorate it and furnish it in the most beautiful and tasteful way possible. So really lovely stuff for you, but it's, you know, it's quite homey, it's quite practical. You have a passion for the big picture, but your ruling planet Jupiter is asking you to grow your emotional base, your family and home base, more than any other part of your life at the present time. So Capricorn, 
For you, of course, the new moon, the solar eclipse is in your fifth house in your sister earth sign of Taurus, which is all about play, fun, sociability, gregariousness. The third house energy means that somebody's going to be hanging on your every word over the next half year. If that person's not obvious at the moment, they're going to be emerging soon for you. you you've got that to look forward to, which is really exciting. But most of all, your enthusiasm, your ideas, you can be quite a cautious person like Scorpio, but now you're being given lots of encouragement. Pluto has been working its way through your sign since 2008. It's obviously pretty near the end of that process. It switches into Aquarius in 23 for two and a half months before moving there into Aquarius in 24. But this link to uh, Mercury suggests that you know, not only can this be a creative, fun and playful and sociable time, it can be a very productive time for new ideas, but also organising them in a very precise way. And when you set your sight on a goal, your steadfastness, your ability to go through the processes in a very efficient, reliable and uh, realistic way is the stuff of astral law. Which brings us to Aquarius. Well, for you... You're going to be moving, you're going to be improving, it's one of the two, or you're going to be adding somebody new to your home clan. Now this could be that someone's going to come into the family like an offspring meets a new partner, or there's going to be a baby, or you're going to have that new home over this next half year, or you're going to have some incredible fortune in terms of your finances. Now if you followed me a long time, you know I don't uh, expouse uh, I don't overflower the potential, but having the two planets of fortune bound together in the second house means that your sweet, sweet tooth, if you've got one, I've got a massive sweet tooth, but of course I've got the ascendant in Libra. But if you have got a sweet tooth, you know, you're really going to enjoy the good things in life over the next half year. But I feel there is the potential to improve your financial lot. What about Saturn in your own sign? Well, it depends where your sun is or other inner planets. You know, so it's now up to 24 degrees. It gets up to about 27, I think, before going into its retrograde. So I think for people born in the earlier parts of Aquarius, that real tough grind last year and the first three months of this year between Saturn and Uranus, that's pretty well at an end. Um, it just depends. If your personal planets are later into Aquarius, if you've got more than the Sun, which is often possible, then maybe, you know, there are things you need to become more disciplined about. But I think having Mars, Neptune, Venus, Jupiter, all in the second house, your desire to improve your lot make the foundations of your world really solid is going to be really, really strong. And that brings us finally, but never least, to Pisces. So that collection, that stellium in your sign, it's just sparkling with potential. But of course, the actual new moon itself, the solar eclipse is in your third house of how you think, your siblings, your connections to neighbours, your ideas, anything that's to do with the digital world. You're gonna be inspired. Your ability to be an innovator is really emphasised over the next six months. What's not to like? Well, just sat in, in the 12th house because your own self-doubt, anxiety or fear could inhibit you from really embracing what is a glorious opportunity. So you must believe in yourself to the absolute maximum degree. And please remember that Saturn is in a semi-sextile with... Neptune, Venus and Jupiter, that can be good for you. So really dive deep to get the most of your inner past resources and experience because they can be very, very good in terms of this next phase of your life that you're entering, which is so exciting for you. That completes the uh, broadcast for the Taurus solar eclipse. Thank you so much for joining me. Please stay safe, take care, and goodbye for now.